station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we're ready for the event. WGBH News, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Hi, this is Arun. Hi, everyone. This is Steve Bowen on the International Space Station. Uh, Steve, we're not hearing you just yet. Uh, All right, let me check again. I've got the mic on, and I should be good. Um, I'm wondering if it's something with the microphone, because we did a test. Test ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. Well, I can see. No, we can't. Well, I can see. No, we can't. We can see. We can see. We are getting you in building eight, so the mic is coming down. If you could try and hold it closer to your mouth as they Uh, from Mission Control. No audio through the Skype right now. But you haven't built a gate, right? Everyone, we're standing by. Right here. All right, I'll stand by. Okay. Thank you. I think I just pitched this thing up again. Okay. As soon as we hear, uh, get audio from the Skype, you'll hear it. Awesome. Okay, we're feeling better. Yeah. We're expecting audio shortly. Why don't you say hi to Steve? Steve, this is Arun Roth with Arun. All Things Considered. How do you hear me? Arun, I have you loud and clear. How do you hear me? We were having some audio problems there. I, you, you sound great right now, hearing you nice and nice and clear. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, are we uh, are we ready to to commence? Give me one second. I want to see if I can. Um, I want to see if I can um, uh, back out. There's a little audio coming back. Arun's voice before. Um, uh, there's a little bit coming back through the Skype. So I'm going to uh, press something. So, Bill, why don't we, we'll, we'll talk for a moment while we do that. Would that be helpful? That'd be great. Great. So, Stephen, we're, we're just working out the uh, the sound to make sure we're going to record right. Seems like there's a delay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll like, wait for a moment uh, uh, when, 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 when you're getting an, an answer. Um, but we're... So thrilled to uh, to have you with us. Well, we we have about uh, I think about an eighteen minute window. Um, Arun, right. I think you guys, I think we're ready, so you can roll. Six. Okay, great. Uh, Stephen, any questions before we dive in? I'm not going to do an introduction, so we can use use all the time for the conversation. Well, that sounds fine to me. I'm ready to go whenever you are. That's great. First, I will say. Um, uh, uh, Stephen, actually, say your name for me. I want to make sure I pronounce it properly. Stephen Bowen. Stephen Bowen, welcome to 
Welcome to GBH's All Things Considered. That's good to be here. First question I have to ask you is, uh, tell me what you're seeing right now, or if you're not at a window, what, what you would be seeing right now. Uh, right now, I think we're heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. We just passed uh, over South America and heading up toward the African coast on a 51.6 degree inclination. So that, that's where you see those that angle. If you watch a satellite map, we're heading up from South America to Africa. And you're up there with your new crew. Are you? Uh, do you feel like you're settled yet? <laughs> oh, not yet, not yet. It's it's funny because uh, my longest previous mission was about 16 days, so we've already passed that. And uh, you know, we're starting to get settled in, and we feel like we kind of know what we're doing, but we're not really comfortable. And uh, some of the guys that have been here, obviously, a lot longer than us. Yeah, you know, say it takes about a month to six weeks or so before you really feel like this is this is somewhat normal. Uh, conversely, it takes about that long when you get back to Earth to feel like Earth is normal. Huh. And uh, w when you get up there with a the new crew, do you have uh, overlap with the existing crew? How how does that work? Yeah, so we got up here on uh, uh, with Crew Five was still on board, and so those four crew members. And us four, and then three of the Soyuz. So we had 11 people up here, which, even though station's pretty big, it is an operating operating lab. So the actual habitable volume in the, in the uh, places where people kind of live is relatively small. So it seemed crowded. So when Crew Five left, you know, a week or so ago, a little more than a week ago, uh, it seemed a lot emptier. And uh, you know, they're incredibly helpful during our turnover and explaining how things operate and how things work. Uh, so it was great to have over. We kind of shoot for that. Uh, so we get some of that turnover and the learning curve is a lot steeper if you're able to pass on your knowledge. I, I, I want to ask you about a bit about your background. I'm wondering that when uh, you're looking at that mirror, sorry, I wonder that when you're looking at that window, uh, if you see Massachusetts, have you ever think about that uh, that kid growing up in Cohasset, and did he ever dream of going to space? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I have done that, and uh, yeah, well, when I was when I was very young, I, I I'm old enough to have watched watched as uh, you know we first stepped foot on the moon. I remember watching that on a black and white TV in our house in Cohasset, and uh, so. The concept of becoming an astronaut was just sort of fantastic to me. And I never really set it out as a career goal, but again, I I just kind of went along, studied as hard as I could, always took the opportunities I could to, to learn more. Um, and uh, the path I took, I ended up uh, as an officer in the Nuclear Submarine Corps, and uh, I, I applied from there. And I was fortunate enough to get selected. So. Uh, it was a dream when I was a little kid, but it wasn't something I planned on during my uh, early adult career. But it's been a fantastic 23 years so far. Well, like like those classic Apollo astronauts that you were you were watching on on TV, you followed the uh, the Navy route. Yes, I did. I uh, so you know, and I I kind of talked to when I talked to students. I kind of emphasize the fact that you know what you do uh, in you know high school, et cetera. If you're having difficulty in a class or something, spend a little extra time and 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 focus on that so you can bring your grades up and learn because the teachers are teaching us this stuff for some reason. So I kind of got that attitude fairly early on because I was not a good reader at first, and so I always use that. And by the time I got to be a senior in high school, I got to kind of choose where I wanted to go to school. And the U.S. Naval Academy seemed like a great engineering school. And so I went to the U.S. Naval Academy, followed the same thing there. I did well enough that I was able to select the submarine corps uh, upon graduation. And then I, I continued to work hard. And I really, when you do that, you get to choose the, the opportunities you have. And it's, it's pretty exciting. And it led me to the opportunity to apply to become an astronaut, which isn't like that because there's so many qualified people. I, I feel like I kind of won the lottery when I got selected. 
Well, you you must have done well since then because you're you're now commanding this mission. Is this your first mission as a commander? Yes, my three previous missions were all shuttle missions, and I basically came up to the International Space Station as a uh, as a construction worker, as a contractor, helping build the International Space Station. So I, I have the opportunity now to kind of live in this house, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. And tell us a bit more about uh, about your 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 mission. Your first off, the the team that you're leading it's it's an international team. Yeah, this is an amazing group. We've got uh, uh, three Russian cosmonauts on board. We brought one of them up with us on the SpaceX Dragon, and uh, we have a United Arab Emirates astronaut as well uh, on his first flight and the first long duration flight for the Emirates. And uh, it's it's really exciting to have a, a, such a, a diverse group of people on board. And tell us about what uh, what your goals are, what you hope to accomplish uh, on, on this. Well, it's uh, it is a national laboratory, so there is there are several hundred experiments going on all around us, uh, pretty much at all times. Uh, some of them run pretty much autonomously. Uh, a lot of them require our input, our activity uh, to, to help keep them going. Uh, we help maintain the space station. We ourselves are part of the experiment, so, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, a lot of uh, sampling and um, just maintaining the station is the other part of it. But really what we're doing is continuing the operation of this laboratory, this incredible asset for science that's been manned, you know, for since October of 2000, so almost 23 years now, we've had people permanently living in space. So that's pretty exciting in and of itself. But the research is really the goal. With with all of that, it sounds like the work could never stop. How how does your how does your typical day go on on the International Space Station? Well, there's a couple things that are really important. They want to make sure you get enough sleep, so they do schedule. Uh, a block of time for sleep. You want to get about eight hours if you can. You know, that's that's hard on the ground. It's hard up here. Uh, you also have to work out, do a load-bearing exercise for two hours every day to ensure that you maintain the bone density and muscle mass. Uh, you have to find time to eat and take care of all those other issues uh, that go along with living. So you end up with about eight to ten hour uh, work day. It's scheduled over 12 hours because you can't put things right on top of each other. So it's, it's a long day and uh, Sometimes you do end up working weekends, which is, uh, which is good. You know, you're always doing something useful and exciting. And if you get a chance to look at our schedule, you could probably have somebody send you just a, an image of what we do on a, on a daily basis. Uh, you'll see we don't get a whole lot of spare time, uh, which is why it's so important to get, you know, weekends or getting that opportunity for some dial time to recover, to continue the pace. Your crew, uh went up to the International Space Station on uh, on a SpaceX uh, spacecraft. Um, tell me about that, like how, how it's been learning to use a new hardware like that. Oh, it's so different, because I, uh, I grew up on the space shuttle. When I got to the astronaut office, I did three shuttle flights, and uh, I was flight engineer for my first flight. And we had hundreds of switches and circuit breakers and dials and knobs and displays that really required some manual intervention at different points in order to make things happen. The Dragon spacecraft is almost entirely automated. Uh, so uh, in reality, we monitored systems. We Our input, our interface is not those uh, switches and circuit breakers. It's a, it's a touch screen. So it's incredibly different, incredibly uh, capable uh, machine. It, does, uh, it, it did its job well for us so far. And will you use the Dragon capsule to, to get home, or, or is, did the outgoing crew use that? Nope, nope, we will use our own capsule heading home in uh, you know six months or so. And uh, it's a, it, you splash down in the ocean, just uh, similar to the way they did in the Apollo days. Uh, and that's because the, you know, the weather constraints are pretty tight then. So that's one reason Crew 5 was here a little bit extra, a few extra days with us. Uh, you got to make sure the weather's safe to come home. And, uh, yep, that's how we'll be getting home in about five or six months. 
And speaking of new hardware, Stephen, I have to imagine this is a pretty exciting time to be an astronaut with uh, the, the coming plans from, uh, from, from NASA. There are going to be additional moon missions. As, as someone who grew up watching those Apollo missions, uh, tell me about what it feels like. Oh, it's been incredibly exciting, and it's been getting more and more exciting over the past, you know, half decade or so. Once, uh, you know, the Artemis uh, mission started to become more realistic, commercial crew came online, and just bringing that other set of vehicles, the commercial crew vehicles, we got SpaceX, hopefully we'll get Boeing up here soon. Uh, that was incredibly exciting, incredibly amazing to see. And now with Artemis and Gateway and potential missions to the moon, it's it's absolutely amazing. I've had friends that have been at NASA a lot longer than me, and they they will tell you that this is the most exciting time they've ever had at NASA. Is is there kind of like a dissonance, or there must be a real contrast when you're docking the the, the Dragon spacecraft at the International Space Station, which has now been it's been manned for over twenty years now. Oh, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. I came through the hatch, and it, it looks familiar to when I left it 10, 12 years ago. Uh, but it's just so much busier. Having that extra crew member that the Dragon capsule provides, uh, I think just adds that much more capability to the laboratory itself. And it's, it's really exciting. It's an incredibly bustling place, and that, that's great to see. Stephen, our, our time has just flown by because I, 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 you can probably tell how much I'm loving talking to you about, about all of this. Uh, b before before we have to let you go, uh, is there anything you wanted to say to your to friends and family uh, back here on Earth in Massachusetts? I'd like to say, uh, you know, hello. Um, really enjoys enjoying the... Uh, the, the weather up here, uh, I know the weather down there has been tough at times this past few months. <laughs> I guess it was cold and dreary yesterday. So, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to getting home in the, in the uh, fall time frame after we get back to Houston. Uh, and I get some recovery, probably going to head back up to New England, head up to see family in Boston. So it's, it's going to be exciting. And, you know, maybe we'll have an NBA and an NHL championship to, to celebrate as well. And when when are you scheduled to uh, to come back? When does the mission wrap up? Mission wrap up. Uh, looks like the end of August, early September, right now. Well, when 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 you're when you're back on Earth and back in Massachusetts, would love for you to come come visit us at GBH. Oh, I think I'd enjoy that. I haven't been there in a long time. Stephen, it's been great speaking with you. Thank you so much. Now, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Hope to do it again too soon. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants from WGBH News Station. We're now resuming operational audio communications.